True freedom requires the rule of law and justice. But what is justice without respect for human right? What are this right? Do you know your right as a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? What are your obligations and responsibilities under the law? Join Kayo Diadiremi Esquire on the law and Jew on Rock City 101.9 FM Sundays 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. All right, uh, it's a bright um, afternoon here in Adokita. Uh, we're speaking live from the studio, your station, Rock City 101.9 FM. In case you're listening by chance to this station and you're wondering, uh, station on the lake, or no? <laughs> With a blast from the past and now um, law program about your rights, that, that, that's your darling station, Rock City. 101.9 FM, right? Uh, that's what we do here every Sunday, 3 p.m. through 4 p.m. It's a program where you get to know what your rights are. Of course, at times we discuss obligations when need be as um, Nigerians or as at times persons living in Nigeria. That's what we got to do here. I'm your regular host on the program. My name is Kayode Adiremi. All right, we like to do a run through of programs we've had in time past. Um, including and especially the ones that are yet to be resolved or we are yet to have answers to the questions. We we'll keep on repeating them, even if it takes years. We we'll keep on repeating them until something is done about them. Else, to have been wasted airtime to bring up issues, have them not resolved, and then move away from them. I've stopped talking about the human trafficking victims because um, we've tried in a little way to help them raise um, donations. And then uh, the couple of other ones he moved away from. Same thing for Kaka. You know, I made um, many announcements that those that had information should get through, but nobody did. Okay, now so we have two pending matters um, that are yet to be addressed uh, by the appropriate court quarters. One is Sheyi Akinade. Yes, I will keep on saying that. Sheyi Akinade was a funabite until men of the Nigeria Police Force here in Obada Oko got him arrested, as far as I'm concerned, unlawfully, got him detained, which made him lose the chance to um, do his desertification, like something like a defense of his project, final year project in school. And um, he also lost a lot of money, people's money, from forex trading or investment. All these things were too much for the little boy to manage. And um, eventually, he called for help. Nobody was there to listen or answer and uh, he did what he thought uh, was left to him. He was hopeless and he felt helpless. He kept on asking questions that why was I arrested in the first place? No answers until unfortunately he took his own life. All right, and two, as I speak, I told us we've written to the IG, IG, we've met the CP, DC, we've met every meetable person, but nothing, nothing as far as I know has been done about this case. Two is Muiwa, your delay, the man that um, you know you story already. He is a taxi driver. He took um, a police officer around town, somewhere around Shagamo Axis, and then um, he asked for his money. And the man said, No, officer Nimina Amile. So, uh, excuse me, yeah, that's quite irresponsible to even think, let alone saying that an officer should pay, man. Uh, <laughs> why shouldn't you pay? Don't you get salaries? If you cannot pay, then trek. I've heard that while I was in Lagos before, when you when when officers boarded downfalls, downfalls is like a commercial boat. They will tell them officer and me they so all those things should stop. It doesn't make sense. If you do, if you cannot so then trek. All right. Anyway, those being said, um, we are yet to get any serious response from our quarters on these things. You've asked questions yet to be answered. Now for today's focus, um, I will tell us what the topic is, and then we'll take a break. Because why a break after a topic? I I sat back, I traveled over the weekend when I was traveling back to Abelkuta. A lot of things were running through my mind. That Nigeria, my country, what things are wrong, what things are right, what can we do better, what are we not doing well. Those things were so much on my mind. And somehow I think it kind of, I, I listened to a song while I was just um, thinking about everything. And that song seemed to nearly capture what I. I summarized the current situation to be. Okay, we get to do the song together if you know it. Maybe we do a sing along. 
Akon did the song, I'm actually not happy. I've had a lot of information calls in the past one week, very disturbing ones. Some of them may call in the program today and share their experiences. We are far from being free. And in my opinion, the government is culpable in this. Clearly, yeah, I mean, it, um, we're far from being free. And it's a bulk of it rests on the table of those making policies and governing the country. Yes, again, I say it, the book ends on your table. What are we looking at today? Well, uh, about um, a couple of months ago, we, talk, we started talking about your rights under the Constitution, beginning from Section 33, right to Life 34, 35 through 46. Last week, we talked about Section 45. And today, we are going to talk about Section 46, and that will mark the end of human rights discussions. Of course, your right continues. <laughs> By the way, this is also in the African Charter. Almost every serious law you see will have factored in these rights from sections 33 through 46 of the 1999 Constitution. So, you know, what our style is, someone called me and said that's Socrates' style. We try to put a thought in question form and answer the question. So, by that, I think we get some more speed by doing that. If I want to talk about the Yoruba, kill us out there, no? All right. Eto ila soropa. At his section 33 C 45. 46 like a solene. Uh in ye um many do leave in the 50 again or many in the 50 46. Alright, uh Ejo Ejaka Kikalesi, Ejaka Wajoko Kajoko, stop call your friends, call your neighbors, or something you want to discuss today too. Alright, um the question is what do I do if my fundamental rights are infringed upon? Kini Molishi Timobate by the way from all virtually all the cases that i've handled in court my office has handled as a lawyer um human rights abuses are often done by security agencies most times most times a part of me think is because the ppr was here about three weeks ago and i he was asking that um um why is it that people at times when when you complain of police brutality they get away with it i said maybe it's because police officers have guns with them without gun and uniform you can't slap you and i'll be looking at you man self-defense is permitted by our laws so but they have gone to back up uh whatever thing they're doing so that may be a negative edge on their part check it out again we will not keep quiet until we have a sane society all right again, again the question we're looking at today generally speaking is section 46 of the constitution what do i do if my fundamental right has been infringed or is about to be infringed upon okay we take a short break let's do this song is i think it's ghetto yeah ghetto the man called it ghetto 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 this street reminds me of quicksand a place where with the more you run the more you sink in a quicksand if you cry for help no one will seem to hear people die daily that's what we see in this song it, it nearly captures what we're talking about in this country today please um we'll be right back don't go anywhere All right, um, for the sake of those that are wondering, is it ghetto, ghetto? <laughs> like, you can't ghetto. <laughs> I think it's an American way of saying ghetto, ghetto like Bimbi, where things happen anyhow, anytime. It's, it, it's a bad situation, really. And um, we are hopeful that with, 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 with the continuous cry of the voices of freedom, someday people would do anything, would die to get to this country. All right, that, that can happen if you have stable government policies, if you have a um, free and fair society for all, improved infrastructure. The list is not just the, the indices of what a democracy or good governance or governance is. Then people will start looking up to this country as well. All right, to the questions, and then um, we move to other things quickly. Now, what steps can I take? under the law if my rights have been infringed or likely to be infringed upon well what i want to first talk about this afternoon is um the law says that you don't have to wait until your rights are infringed upon before you take steps these steps i'm about to reel out if your rights have been infringed one two if your your right is being that's continuous infringed or three if your right is likely to be infringed Oftentimes, people wait until their rights are infringed before they take steps. There are three categories. Let me give examples. 
the rights have been infringed is the case of Sheyi Akiade. He has been arrested, he has been detained, and later released. That is in the past form. If it is being infringed, I will give an example. We have instituted cases in court where the, we still have some in court now, where some people, persons were arrested and detained. The law is that you must be taken to the court within 24 hours of your arrest. I take it again. Within 24 hours of your arrest, you must be taken to the court. Why so? It would be wrong for the police, civil defense, soldiers, whatever, to detain you beyond that time. Why would it be wrong? Because to delay you beyond that time is for them to assume or to have concluded that you are guilty. It is the court's duty to determine your guilt or innocence. So within 24 hours, the police officers, the, the whatever, civil defense, whatever, must charge any arrested person to a court of competent jurisdiction. In Nigeria, that rarely happens. We bleed many times when I get calls. I remember a case I handled some time. After arrest, an investigation and all the police officers right in my presence admitted that the man was guiltless or was innocent it was a trumped up suspicion or petition and this they said okay now uh, we have seen that from our investigation that was I was called into the matter after about three days of detention and I said okay can my clients go now they said no he has to rule jail first I said, you guys, can you, can you can you be serious? You just said that from your investigation, this man knows nothing about why you have arrested and detained him. And you are still wanting him to roll jab before he goes. I was livid that day. I, I mean, don't you think about our children's future? It, 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 it's evil by, by all dimensions. It's evil, really. That happened, it's not a story I was told. I was right there in that police station that day. Of course, I didn't let that happen. I didn't, I, I mean, it was, it was a bad day, they would drink water. <laughs> ah, this country will be better. Like we All right. So what you do, apply to a state high court, apply to the court for uh, a redress. That's what the law says. So when your rights have been infringed, you have to apply to the court for redress all right and which court should you apply to the court where that incident took place if for example you were slapped god forbid in ondo state can you come to ogun state high court Kobape or ishabo to sue whoever slapped you no you cannot you have to institute that case where that thing happened or where the respondent is respondent is someone that you have sued any type of ledger will not be any respondent that's what the law says you will see that in section 46 subsection 1 of the 1999 constitution let's move with greater speed for time's sake number two which court can you apply to magistrate court customary court high court customary court of appeal federal high court court of appeal supreme court which one of them all the law says by virtue of section 46 subsection 2 you have to apply to a state high court they have what we call original jurisdiction don't worry your head about the word jurisdiction it simply means the presence or the power all right that somebody or a body has so jurisdiction is the power so the power the court that has power to um, entertain such cases at the respective state high courts so if police if for example police runs through you or does something wrong to you or soldiers and you sue in the magistrate court such suit will not be competent we call it incompetent suit it will be struck out or you move straight to the court of appeal it won't work you have to start from the court that has original jurisdiction and if you are suing for instance a federal government agency all right you may also bring it in a federal high court there are all other adjoining things that one has to take care of to do before you do this thing that's why you have to consult your lawyer and when you consult a lawyer pay your lawyer well <laughs> some people will tell us that um, 
uh, a good recharge card. Recharge card doesn't pay law school fees now. <laughs> pay lawyers well. I will tell us a story. Uh, a particular man, a blind man, was he was just like tiptoeing with his um with his crutches, um, his walking stick. He was asking for a barber shop. Uh, remember, a blind man, and he you, and he walked into the barber shop and he said. Uh, Genro, I want to cut my hair and they told him uh, okay Baba no problem you, you're gonna cut your hair for 200 naira the man said no 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 that's not right I have only 100 naira with me I'm paying 100 naira ah, Baba it's 200 he said no I pay 100 you know that's what you guys call uh, okay no problem you wanna pay 200 you wanna pay 100 naira okay bring it so I go you know the way clipper does now? Vroom, vroom, vibration on your head. Remember, the man was blind. There was a mirror in his front, but he wasn't seeing nothing because he had eye problem. And uh, you know what the Baba did? <laughs> oh, girl, I was <laughs> They cut half of the hair. And they were like, wow, man is fat. People were laughing. So he must have thought, hmm, nice job. And the man got out with his walking stick. To, 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 to. And so when you go home, they asked you, ah, Baba, some money on this, Baba is like, on the generator, they are all food. You know, I'm going to get so rich. And he said, why? When he went back to me, Baba, Baba said, you know what? I only barbed <laughs> the quantum of the money he paid me. <laughs> he said, since he paid me half, I'm Baba half for him too. What does that translate <laughs> to? So lawyers may not argue with you too much because at times we do cut, copy and paste. Um, our, those roadside typists can do that for you. What a lawyer would do to you would hardly be called copy and paste because an agreement done, for example, from a land you bought from a family is different from an agreement done um, um, for a, a, a land bought from a church or a mosque. It will be different from land bought from community. It's different from land bought from a company. That would be different from land bought from an individual. Oh yeah, to see around, they are different. But people that you pay two thousand, five thousand to do agreement for you, they don't know. They just ask you a for ruko, a be a kibo, shema shogo ni any, a for all address. They just copy and paste, put the price. So what you have in your problem in your hand is a problem. It's not a document. All right. You know, at times if somebody wants to go to court and ask them, shall I agree? They say yes. When they give me that agreement, I I can't even take it near court because the court will insult me. Me, you are a trained lawyer, you are not a baby lawyer. Why are you bring this to court? Same thing for quick notices. I said, quick notice name at least eight different things must be in a quick notice. I won't tell you, ask your lawyer to tell you. <laughs> so, please, uh, that's like doctors will say, don't self medicate. The same thing applies to law as well. All right, so when you pay, when you don't pay your lawyer well, you may force some of them, not all, to do a shorty job for you. But when you pay well, what do you have now? I know. You're Reason am, <laughs> as they say. All right, that was a, on a light note, but I meant it. It was light and thick at the same time. All right, so quickly moving ahead. What, who may make rules to guide such court proceedings when you see a case of um, human rights abuse, whether right to life, like Shay's case, for instance. All right, we have uh, a breach, in my opinion, a breach of right to human dignity. All right, right to um, freedom and the likes it was limited on the likes all right so the the law says that only the chief justice of nigeria who we call cjn for short can make such rule the rule is in nigeria it is called fundamental right enforcement procedure rules the cjn makes that you can see that in section 46 sub section 3 of the same 1999 constitution all right, next question. Can the National Assembly add to the powers of the court with respect to fundamental matters? The answer is yes. Who is the National Assembly, you may ask? It's a combination of the House of Rep and the Senate. Two of them combined are what we call the National Assembly. So yes, they can add to the laws, I mean to the powers of state high courts to look into fundamental right enforcement matters you can see that in section 46 subsection 4 paragraph a of the same constitution however 
it's not the case that Fenny Brother Bia Mila will now get up and say, Set I court, I'm donating more powers to you. Or Ahmed Lala will say, uh, Set I court in uh, Abel Kuta of the state, or Ijebu or Ota. And no, that's not how it is done. It has to be by way of legislation. So, what I'm trying to say is that, or what the law is trying to say is that, uh, the National Assembly has power to expand by law, to expand the powers of the State High Court to look into matters like this. All right, your course, you like I said, today marks the end of our discussion on fundamental rights as, contain, as contained in our constitution. Next question, what if I don't, I don't have money to seek redress? That happens. There was a day someone came to my office and said, our office and said, um, uh, me, somebody has wronged me and I want to take the person to the court. Okay. I said, what did the person do? The, the, the woman said, uh, okay. So you lend someone money, like a loan, and the person did not pay you. Okay. How much is the money? The woman said 5,000. And she said, I put up with your court. You know what I did? I just put mine in my pocket. I said, I no way, Emma. I was so far, I forget it. Because what it takes to even file and serve is beyond that already. So you can imagine. So what happens if um, you want to seek redress and you don't have money? The law says that the National Assembly shall, not may, shall make provisions rendering as assistance to indigent citizens. Who are indigent citizens? They are people that are on the low kedar or low rung of financial status. So they have powers to, um, to make provisions for such people. And the end of such provision is this, is to ensure, is to ensure that um, such persons can have access to legal practitioners to represent them for their claims. There's something we call pro bono in law. Pro bono is a Latin word which simply means doing something for free. All right, for free. Lawyers do it too. It's a scheme that has been introduced to Open State now, PDSS, Police Duty Solicitor Scheme, where lawyers work with the Ministry of Justice, private and um, official bar. We come together to ensure that those detained in police stations or arrested um, have quick, 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 again, I repeat, quick access to justice. That's a beautiful one. In my opinion, if police truly want help, if they I, I, I was asking the PPR of Ogun State two weeks ago. I said, what, what, what will police lose if people start recording what happens to them? I pity judges at times. When judges have to run through trial in the court, and then they have what we call trial within trial. What does that mean? When you have charged someone for an offense, and you are tendering. Of course, at the point of arrest, an arrested person will write what we call a statement, all right, at the police statement. We call it extrajudicial statement. So when the matter gets to court, you have to tender that statement in court. The law is that by the Evidence Act from sections 27 beginning, under voluntariness and the likes, confession voluntariness and the likes, if if it if the if the, the accused person can say that this document was not made by me. In other words, one new meaning, maybe by jurors, undue influence, etc. If that is the case, then the court has to go through the rigor of what you call trial within trial. So trying to see whether truly it was obtained by force or by threat or by duress. It takes a long time. Check this out. If there was a video recording showing from when the person entered to the time he or she wrote the statement, it would take care of trial within trial in our country. Trial within trial, by the way, at times can take two years. Yes, two years. At times it takes one, two months. Yes, to have fast gone here, you know. But why waste two years to see whether someone was forced to write a document when, in the first place, there could have been a recording from the point of arrest, record through? I tell, I just didn't want to personally engage PPRO too much that day. But think about it. If police have, and we usually tell them, you are not persecutors, you are prosecutors. Your job is to make investigations and table your investigations before the court. That's why you have the IPO, investigating police officer. So if you can show the court how you are arrested, how you brought the person down, 
how you give the person a paper to write uh, what's it called statement and how the person wrote the statement and then post the video there that same document show the signature the name the date put the time there it should just be easy the issue of trial within trial will be forever forgotten in our jurisdiction that can take care of it but unfortunately you hear police officers say that uh, it's a security office you can't use phone okay use your own phone if that's the case <laughs> i mean could later we go here now by the way i don't see a reason why you should even say don't use phone when it's not as if i'm going to your armory to go and record your your weapons your bullets that's what i'm doing i'm just recording my clients there should be no hassles whatsoever about that and by the way the there's a law in ogun state under um senator Bukoyambosu's administration which was passed it is called the for short it is called the acjl administration of criminal justice law of ogun state that law says that there should be video recording of suspects when taking their statements so it's even a matter of law killer answer by the way so all those things they are counter productive if truly i don't know whether the commissioner of police is listening to me now if oga tebang bomi please let us help us to help you police can if you truly you want to do it with bad eggs Tom Baru Koinje, then be as open as transparent as possible okay that was a way of by way of veering so the last point i made about national assembly helping the indigent citizens you can see it in section 46 subsection 4 Paragraph B, subparagraph so I of the 1999 Constitution. All right. Um, like I said, I got some calls over the weekend of some people that have been victims of um, different. A, a man told me that uh, vigilante, <laughs> because he's owing money, <laughs> he's, he was owing some more money, and the person he was owing contacted vigilante, and then they detained him. That's <laughs> even more lure. So we're detained. There are very different things for the past one week. Some are disappearing. I may share some of them. We we'll take a short break again. When we come back, I open the studio lines and then we we'll take um, your calls, contributions, and questions. Don't go anywhere. Emmanuel Bikonko. We'll be right back. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have your last question, which is: Does vigilante have right to detain? That's the question. All right. Um. Thank you, sir. Yes. Let's take me a couple of more calls and then um, call it a wrap, and we we'll do. Don't worry, if you're trying to study law, don't worry. <laughs> if you have a call, just um yes, um vigilante has no 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 right. Let me explain. Vigilante can actually detain. For example, if you are walking uh, or you're about to bridge the peace of uh, the peace of the public, they can pick you up but immediately hand you over to the police. They should not keep you in their own custody. No, you're not a bench, you're not a barrel, you're not a boot, you're a human being. They should hand you over all right anybody can even arrest anyway but that depends on a lot of things under the criminal uh, criminal laws there are, there's a class of of offenses that even civilians can arrest I, i've arrested people before one man that almost killed with uh, a truck driving on phone road i we stopped the truck i collected his key and i called the dpo of Antoko at the time to come and pick him up so everybody can arrest really but if it's because somebody's owing somebody and it's not because he stole the money not even the IGP if you are <laughs> in the first place. Vigilantes. Imagine if they now have guns. Kill him on the If also you have called, just uh, kindly let us know, please. Now, about that person that uh, asked, um, someone asked about, okay, I think it's a white your person, Joe. Well, would you say that uh, between ages 7 to 12? Um, yes. The, the thing is, this is how it's going to work. Some have, we have, of course, we have some entries already. Uh, some have sent ages 17, 18. No, please let us do 12 to um, 7 to 12 for now. We have some entries. And if you did not listen in last week, what that is about is this if you have a child or a world that is aspiring to be a lawyer, and that child or world is between ages 7 to 12, about Lomo, lawyer, then any key if you want um information i want get you show us you so you number to my play lori whatsapp send their details what are you to send send their name their age their location and contact number number that you want see what you can see on whatsapp on whatsapp to this line to this line 0803 0803 050 3271 
WhatsApp line you send it to this WhatsApp line 003-050-3271 yes for those asking pay our bank account those saying we've not heard anything we are still doing this is the stage of collation all right after collation we begin to get you updated listen to this program um, if you want to get regular updates on what the plans are of course after some time we'll invite some of the kids maybe in fives to the to the studio here to come and discuss with us we ask them some questions i won't tell you what i will ask yet we have questions for them of course there will be a lot of session prolonged session okay it is about mentorship mentoring them i said last week that we have had enough of people happening into leadership position with little or no preparation that is it can be chaotic it can be chaotic that's why you can see a lawmaker for example slapping a girl beating her up we saw the video i think it's uh, senator is he uh, abbey or something or elisha something that 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 that's max it's max of who a leader ought to be a leader should be composed should know when to give measured response so that's 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 an example of uh, when someone just happens into leadership positions lawyers should not be seen doing that i can't imagine myself throwing punches outside for example you bash my car i just snap you i'm okay <laughs> i snap the picture i take pictures and then i'm fine i move on to see how to uh, take legal steps against that so again please send the the name of the, your, your child the age please if it is more than age 12 don't bother please as if you have this is just phase one we are doing all right we, want to, we have another one for the older ones by the way, like I said, I think I mentioned last week, I conferred with um, Honorable Kende Shogunle. He is vast when it comes to leadership and training. Of course, I sat in his house some weeks ago and I learned a lot myself too. I'm here to recover himself and um, one Mr. Elkana. So we we are doing. <clears throat> we are planning to harness with these people, to plan with them, to have a robust uh, mentorship series or program for for them. All right, so. <clears throat> I, I call it camp, just Kayo the Adoremi mentorship program. The goal is to guide and mentor adolescents aspiring to make positive marks in their respective fields or career. Again, 7 to 12 sent to that number. Okay, let me quickly try and get into the head of Vigilante in Ogo State. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, please. 01 or 9 FM. Yes, like I promised, I've gotten through to. Um, I call him a body doing your lawyer, you? <laughs> Is the, he will tell us his name by himself and then his post and react to this uh, allegation by one Mr. Otto Ufoma. Mr. Otto Ufoma, I hope you are still listening. All right, let's get on the call with um, him. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. Can we meet you, sir? Thanks so much. My name is Noremi Omari Wagner. You are the what? National? All right. <clears throat> One man, a man called us from um, Ojaobags, Shagamo, alleging that um, your officers at um, vig vigilante officers, your officers at Ojaoba detained him on two different occasions. And I'm wondering, as a lawyer, that if at all vigilant, let me even ask you, sir, do you have right to to detain people to start with? So what happens if you see people maybe committing crimes? Can't you arrest them? That's exactly what we do. If we find anybody committing crime, we immediately arrest such a person and we hand over to the police. Okay. And they arrest Yes, sir. Did, did you were you listening to this program? But I'm sorry, I didn't tell you. You are live on Rock City. I'm sorry, one o one point nine FM. Although I told you I'll put you on radio, but I didn't tell you the station. Were you listening to this program before I called you, sir? No, no, no. I wasn't listening. You see now, so um, that means this man knows. I it's good to know your right to. <laughs> you know, you you bear with me that I told you that vigilante can arrest. But if you listen to me some minutes ago, I said once they arrest, they are to hand over to the police for further investigation and possibly prosecute or possible prosecution 
that's the way to go. Thank you very much for clearing the air. Uh, Boga, how are they doing? But what do you say to, to your men? Your men are at uh, Ojaoba detaining people. Um, uh, what, what's happening about that, sir? Why do you th why, why do you think people keep on mistaking them for vigilantes? What's your uniform, sir? What's what's your uniform color, sir? Just for record. All right, um, sir, we have to let you go now. I must really appreciate you. I didn't give you a saw before calling. There was no previous uh, appointment to call you, and you've been very, very, in my opinion, um, dutiful, and then a lot of decorum in your response. Uh, that's what I that 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 that's when I give thumbs up to leaders. That's 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 um, quite commendable. I appreciate you, sir. All right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. All right, sir. Well, there you have that. That's a very disturbing one. <laughs> Questions. Time is fast spent. Wow. Who are these guys? That's the question. Who are these guys at Ojaoba Shagamo? Take word to them. We have them, um, honorable member representing that axis. Please, steps must be immediately taken. I mean, we are at Ijobawa now. Who exactly are these guys? That's the national PRO. He was the he was the he was the former head of Auguste Vigilante, now the National PRO. And he's saying that even the PPRO, the PR of police had called them before and he said they are not with them. So who exactly are these guys? As usual, we will not stop until we find out. Alright, time is fast spent already. Send the name of your kid or your word to that number 080-3050-3271. Just WhatsApp, not phone call, not text message, please. WhatsApp and only ages 7 to 12 if your child or ward intends to study law. I'm sorry for the calls we could not take and I'm thankful for the calls we were able to take. I appreciate every single person. Without you, there's no us. Remember, this is a very, very large broadband station. Bring your advertisement. I mean, bring your uh, products and, um, and goods for advert here. Contact the marketing department at 0814-998-8672. Write it down. Write it down. Eh? <laughs> 0814 998 It's legal. You know, I told you to always do something legal. So it's legal to call and place your adverts. What are you selling? What are you buying? Place your adverts there. Be sure that um Ipolo la Gumo Wabi. Thank you, Ike. All right. Uh, this is how far we can go today. We're going to wrap on that note. It's been a very, very rewarding and interesting time for me. I'm Barista Kayo De Adiremi. Well, I'm your servant as far as law is concerned. Please, like I usually sign off with, whatever thing you do between now and next week Sunday, ensure that you are on the right side of the law. God bless you.